If you were to ask me what video game I have spent the most hours of my life playing, I guarantee you would never be able to guess the answer. Not only are we talking about a game that did not even have graphics, we are talking about a game that I cannot even find a trace of ever having existed in the first place. So what game holds this dubious honour? Well, it is called Ritual Sacrifice, which is a little known LP mud or multi user dungeon. Now if you don't know what a multi-user dungeon or a MUD is, basically these are kind of the first online multiplayer games. They were text-based games where multiple players could interact with each other, play together and stuff. It's kind of like, imagine World of Warcraft without any graphics. That is what MUDs back in the 90s were. And in particular, the MUD I loved was called Ritual Sacrifice and it was a local MUD to where I lived at the time. Now you would think, given my absolute love of the Wheel of Time, time that what mud would have been my favorite mud but that is not the case you see what mud was freaking enormous there were a billion people in there anytime i went in and i just found it a bit too noisy and overwhelming being a, a, a little old aussie from the the backwaters uh lots of people not my forte whereas ritual sacrifice hosted at the university of western australia like, you could be on there and be the only person there if you went at the right time. And that was much more my style. It allowed me time without having people wandering around and murdering me because they were bored to be able to explore and get a bit more confident. So that is what we are talking about. Ritual Sacrifice, the LP mud that I used to play back in the 90s. And I guarantee I've spent way more hours doing that than any other game before or sin. And what exactly does any of this have to do with a Wheel of Time Godot ARPG devlog? Well, I have been thinking deeply about what to do next in the old uh, the game that I'm building, and really what I want to do is bring in elements of that old school LP mud style that I thoroughly enjoyed. And what set LP muds um, apart as being a little bit different was it, it was more about the guild that you chose than about things like race or, 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 or um, ability group, things like that. So you could be anyone you want, and then as you build up your newbie skills and you get to a point where you're starting to be comfortable in the game, you're then faced with a question about, well, what guild do you want to join? Who do you see yourself being? in this world. So that is the core of what I want to really drag into this particular episode. That is that I'm starting to try and pivot this to make it a bit more mud-like, but just with some broad graphical interface. So the idea here is not that we're making a graphically be beautiful game. The idea is that we are making a game that has graphics just to reduce the cognitive load of all that reading, but at the same time trying to, trying to be true to that original LP mud style, particularly my favourite experiences from that mud called Ritual Sacrifice that I remember to this day. So why don't we now have a bit of a look at our script. So here we are in Godot 4 in our global script and our global script is where I'm handling all of this at the moment. I'm going to split our guild functions off into its own singleton later but for now I've just dumped it all in here and you'll see what I've done so far. So we've got a whole bunch of variables of course. Um, a couple of the important ones I've added in here are around uh, the guild and also the guild skills. So all I've been working on at the moment is just getting it started. So at the moment you can join the two rivers woods and you can use this precise aim at the moment you can see that set to level 2 instead of a level 10 like the Aes Sedai is that's just because I've you know um, amended some parameters just to make it easier for testing purposes all right so I've also introduced a few other concepts into this too um, one of which is called manner at the moment but I think I'm going to change that to be focus because focus would be a lot more of a uh, wheel of time concept right we don't talk about having a certain amount of manner but we do talk about our Aes Sedai or our Asherman having enough strength. And we also talk about our bowmen and swordsmen having enough uh, control of their emotions and you know forming that flame and void. So I think focus is a really good term for a Wheel of Time themed game because it is our focus that is so in, uh, essential to channeling or to combat. And it's managing that focus that sets the uh, amateurs apart from the experts. This very much is a neuroscientific concept, right? So um, entering the flow state. I've got a few videos about that flying around too. Anyway, back to our global script. Um, so down here, we've just created some guild abilities, right? So just to get things started at the moment, I've just got these two going. So our two rivers woodsmen can get those three particular um, abilities and our Aes Sedai can get 
those three abilities, right? And this is stuff that we expand out as we go. Um, most of this will be the same. We still got, I've, um, at, like I said, added the mana there, but I'm going to change that to be focus because I think that'll be more appropriate. Still got things like our attack power, and that varies as we go up in our levels. So just like in those LP muds, basically, we start off with pretty dodgy stats. Every level we go up, those stats improve. So I'm trying to Im implement similar um, dynamics here. So as you go up in level, your HP gets larger, your mana gets larger, your focus gets larger, your attack power gets larger, and all of that plays out in your um, interactions with the mobs. Um, so if we scroll on down a bit further, you'll see where we've got a few other things happening down here. So we've got a, um, a join guild function, and the way I've set that up at the moment, um, it's meant to be waiting for level 10, but I've tweaked a few things down here. So can join guild, I've tweaked to being level two just for now to make it easier. Um, and when uh, we hit that, we're just gonna make it straight away join the Two Rivers Woodsman rather than going and finding the trainer because I haven't coded that part of it yet. I've got to play around a bit with the dialogue with Tam. I'm gonna have Tam as our Two Rivers Woodsman trainer kind of fits the books right but I need to tweak um, the dialogue and stuff so I just haven't gotten into that yet um, and then I've also created our first um, guild ability which is going to be this precise aim and our precise aim is going to have a cooldown um, well it's going to basically uh, it's going to have a 60 second timer so it lasts for 60 seconds it also has a has a cooldown of two minutes and what it does is precise aim just multiplies our attack power so it makes us twice as uh, effective in dealing damage and then that would be able to be used in conjunction with, um, if we go back up the top here, um, for example, conjunction with our two, two rivers longbow, so we can shoot from a long way away and do double damage, that sort of thing. So it's that stacking of abilities as well. And our I said, I, so why don't we just jump in and have a bit of a look so you can see exactly what I am talking about. Hopefully it all works. Uh, so let's jump on in, good old game engine. All right, so we still got to go and get our sword um, so that we can interact. But right now, actually, let me just go back in there just so we're safe from the monsters we've still got our inventory up the top that you can see and down the bottom here where my head is uh let me move my face oh, always get the wrong there we go all right so down here you can see we've actually got a new bit of a ui and that's showing our abilities so um at the moment it just automatically shows this precise aim one that'll all get tweaked of course so let's uh let's run back out let's go and find some magpies and if we can um hit level two we should automatically join the uh the guild let me go into here grab some honey cakes and water and then we know that we should get some magpies we can attack straight away Basically, I've just left these sorts of uh, things built in so that uh, we can still test the actual gameplay, not just move it all, always just move it straight to the end of the, the game. All right, so we should now need one more magpie and we'll hit level two, which will then help us join the guild. So straight away, we now join the Two Rivers Woodsman Guild and we also have access to that ability. So we've clicked on it, that's now active, um, basically so we can run around and, and attack with double power. And so you can see that magpie died a lot faster. So that's kind of where we're at now. We're expanding out the concepts, right? So we're talking about things like guilds and abilities and all that. Let's uh, let's jump out of uh, out of here and back onto the full screen. So what's coming up next? Well, I'm going to sort out the dialogue system so that we can join our guilds by interacting with trainers. So we go and speak to Tam when we hit level 11 and then through that dialogue, we can join our guild. Um, I'm gonna work on fleshing out the rest of those abilities. Um, and what else are we gonna do? Oh, the other guilds uh, we're going to make sure that we have a black tower that we can venture to and join and things like that as well so it might be a little a little while between drinks here but we'll have another uh, another devlog out soon and when we do that we're going to have the black tower the white tower the character selection all those things that i've sort of alluded to here so we're just trying to build basic functionality um one go at a time before i start really making the world a lot more detailed so that's kind of where we're heading next so yeah to wrap it up i mean we've got a Wheel of Time themed Godot 4 based ARPG that is trying to draw its inspiration from old school LP muds that I can never even find a trace of anymore. This might all be like some sort of weird, bizarre dream, but that's where we're at. So if you are um, watching this and you've got some good ideas that you want to share with me, I am all ears. Honestly, this whole thing is about learning for me. 
obviously I can't sell a game that's based on someone else's intellectual property. This is purely about me trying to pick up some skills in Godot, um, work on my just general sort of computer programming logic as well, because it doesn't matter what you're coding in, the logic rules kind of are similar, so it's good to just build those skills. And also, I just enjoy you know, spending a few hours every so often just immersed in the world of the Wheel of Time and trying to make some um, some pretty cool ways of exploring that world. So yeah, feel free to uh, give the video a like and a subscribe if this is the sort of thing you're into. We don't just do Godot around here. There's a whole host of stuff. Um, so if you're only interested in Godot, maybe just follow the playlist that's for you. Otherwise, you know, give the channel a, a subscribe. I'll be super stoked to have you on board. Thanks very much for watching till the end and I will see you next time.